Another bird here. Now, this next bird that I'd like to show you is one that most people will probably recognize based on the sound and not so much ever getting a chance to see it. This next bird is not a bird that is typically active when we are up. It is a bird that is more active early morning and at dusk. It is nicknamed the Tiger of the Sky. And this is, of course, I heard a few people say it, this is a type of owl. Now, the type of owl can be determined based on a few adaptations. Look at the top of this bird's head. You will notice that she has, he has actually, those little feathers, those tufts. Those are not ears. Those are not horns. They are just feather tufts. His ears are actually where you think they should be. Side of the head, lower than the eye. This bird here really relies on that sense of hearing to find his food, also his sense of sight. Those tufts can be used to, def uh, to make himself look bigger. They can be used to blend into his surroundings better. And he can control them as well for communication. His ears are offset. The more nocturnal, the more separation between the ears. So what that tells us is that with the circular facial disc gathering sound in those offset ears, this bird could hear a mouse under a foot of snow fly down, reach to the snow, and grab its mouse dinner. This bird has such good hearing that at this moment, he can probably hear your heart beating in your chest. Pretty cool. Now, look at the eyes. Very large. These birds have large eyes to gather light. They have something, they actually lack something that we have behind our eye, which is muscle. This bird cannot move his eyes in his head. He, he has such large eyes, there's no room for muscle. So what that tells us, if it looks like he's staring at you, he is. He's staring right at you. <laughs> Since he can't move his eyes, he moves his head. All right, who's here heard that owls can turn their head all around the circle? True or false? True. False. False. They can't go all the way around, but what he can do is 270 degrees out of 360. So if he can't move his eyes, he has to move his head. What allows him to do that and not us? Seven more neck bones. He's got 14, we have seven in that little space. Pretty incredible. Now notice his coloration blends into his surroundings. That's gonna help him because he is an ambush predator. This is a bird that is going to wait for their dinner to come to them. It's kind of like me, I'd rather have the Domino's delivery come instead of going out and getting dinner. It's less energy, I'd rather lay on the couch longer. This bird here will wait for the, monk, uh, mate, wait for the rabbit, wait for the skunk. They eat skunks for dinner, they can't smell. They'll eat other raptors, snakes, other birds, you name it, if it's small enough, they will eat it. Now, as I talked about at the beginning, he has his hooked beak, he has his good eyes, but look at his feet. Two toes in the front, two toes in the back. He can move a toe compared to the first two birds that you saw. An animal that can move a toe, pretty cool word. It's called zygodactyl, did you know? Zygo oh, zygodactyl, they can move a toe. Notice his feathered feet, silent flight. This bird could fly over your head and you wouldn't even know it based on his feet and based on his wings having very silent flight. I wanna do a little demonstration for you. In my pouch here, I have a mouse. I promised you at the beginning. But in this pouch, this mouse isn't alive anymore. Oh, sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Thought it was cool. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is count one, two, three, and I'm going to hand him the mouse. That gives you a chance to see what he does naturally in the environment. This bird wants the food in his system as fast as he possibly can instead of leaving it out for something to come by and take it. If this is something you choose not to see after I count one, two, three, you're going to want to close your eyes. But usually when I count one, two, three, people start like this and they usually end like this. All right, here we go. Get your cameras ready. One. You guys see over there? Okay. Two. Three.
So really that big lesson, I like to do that activity A because I think it's pretty interesting and it's very cool. Second, it does show that natural behavior. They want that energy in their body. If they caught that mouse, they better get it instead of their friend that comes by. Um, you will notice that he eats everything. He has to be healthy, but his body can't use everything. So in his second stomach, yeah, he's got two. Um, his second stomach actually packs together all the non-digestible material and the fur, the feathers, the bones, grass, dirt, anything. And then every day, 12 to 24 hours later, they cough up what we know as, as a pellet. All raptors make pellets. Eagle pellets, vulture pellets, falcon pellets. Most people know of owl because owl does not digest bones and that's where schools are typically dissecting them. His story, that bird is a 14 year old boy. He came to us from Michigan, I'm sorry, he's from Wisconsin and he actually is what we call a human imprint. He cannot go back to the wild because he was raised by people. He never learned how to be a great horned owl at that very early stage of development because he saw people instead of his own species. That's why he's with us. The big lesson we can learn you see that baby bird, leave it on the ground. Mommy and daddy can still care for it. Um, and if you have more questions, call the expert instead of bringing him into your home, giving him food and water, and that imprinting can happen at a very um, early age in their development.